In the previous video, we prepped all our components for assembly. Now it's time to put it all together. This video will go over the general assembly process. We'll be adding more videos going over specific steps in the future. So subscribe and drop comments about what steps you want to see in greater detail with tips for a variety of situations. Now we're going to put the pinion support together. We have our races in. Time to put in the outer bearing, the seal. Loop the bearing up. So in startups, it's got some kind of lubrication not running dry. When installing this pinion seal, the seals have a spring in the back. The spring is to hold tension against the yoke or the surfaces that you're sealing. When you hammer these off, these have a tendency to pop out. Now you don't have the same sealing capacity. So with the spring on, you want to take gear oil or something to lube it, make sure it sticks there. Then you can put the seal on and drive it in. Then you can hear the difference in the seats. No spring inside. And the seal seated. So now we're going to set the pinion into the pinion support. A couple ways they do it. A lot of applications use what they call a crush leaf. And this does exactly what it, the name says, it crushes. This crush leaf goes between the inner and the outer bearing. You tighten it down and you crush that sleeve until you get the right amount of preload. For us, because we ship these out without a yoke, we use a solid spacer. So basically doing what the crush sleeve did, but unlike the crush sleeve, we can set our pinion preload by all these different spacers then your preload's always set at that position. You can pull the yoke off, this stays the same. When you put your small shims in, they go in between. Machined edge that cradle those small shims, right? So they don't go out. What I find for this was a certain 0.495 thickness is a good starting point. So I'm at 4.85, I'm about 10 thousandths off. Without a crush sleeve or a preload shim, it would tighten down too tight and you'd never be able to turn it. You think you're right, you throw it in the car, it burns the bearings up. In this case, the bearings did not load each other. When I spun it, it spun freely. Second of all, was to play between the two bearings playing in and out. So we have no more play and we have some preload. See how it stops? It just doesn't keep spinning. So right now, we're gonna check our preload. Take this in the vise. Now pinion preload is based on inch pounds of drag force and rotational drag. The forge should be anywhere from 18 to 26 inch pounds, brand new bearings. Look at that, 25. Now we're gonna install our O-ring, which basically seals the housings together for the gear oil duct to come out. Put a little bit of lubrication on that. There's gonna be shims between pinion support, third member. This gives us our depth. For the nine inch shims, they're that five bolt pattern. See this shape? So there's one place the shim goes in this five bolt pattern. Housing's the same way. And you can see the little notch out here. You want to start somewhere neutral, anywhere from 10 thousandths to 30 thousandths. So I'm going to start kind of in the middle. We're going to start with a 15. These are 3 8 bolts. We use grade 8. When tightening down your pinion support, you want to do it slowly and evenly. Sometimes if you go too quick in it, the O-ring can roll itself out of the notch. And if you don't have to change your pinion depth, once you torque these, you'll never know this O-ring's out of place until you put it in the car or truck and it leaks oil. 
I always take it upside down, gives me a little bit of cradle, the carrier will stay in place. Okay, now we're gonna install the caps again. Spanner goes in and you check it against the threads. You line up like in a single in a single here, so we know our cap goes on this way. Remember, we're upside down too. Boom, done. We have two marks here, two marks here. We're on the correct side. Okay, the easy way you could tell you got your spanner correctly is drops down. If you look, I don't have the spanner in the correct thread. It doesn't see, it's rocking on it. So you're gonna have to take the cap back off, figure out which way it's gotta go. So I gotta come in a little bit at the top, try my cap again. Hear that click? No wobble. Backlash is this movement between the solid pinion and a ring gear or vice versa. We measure backlash on the ring gear to the distance it rocks between the ring gear and the pinion. You're gonna wanna start loose with a lot of slop, then start tightening it. A rough way you can tell you're close, if you can see the backlash, we're too loose. But if you can't hear the backlash, we're too tight. But right now we're gonna get close. Still hear it, you can barely see it. Tighten that adjuster. Tighten that adjuster. Now we're gonna go to dial indicator. So this is what they call a dial indicator. We set this with a magnet base on the side. This pointer goes to the top of the drive side gear. Drive meaning the sharp side, not the slope side. Every manufacturer has a specific range of backlash they want for their gears. These gears are eight to 10,000, and that's where we're gonna set them in. So we're just gonna mark a couple teeth and check the pattern. So you just need three or four of them painted. Let's take a 5 8 wrench. We're looking at the drive side. We got two things. The pattern is towards the toe, what they call the inside. This is the toe and this is the heel. Second of all, a pattern kind of looks like a football. This one looks like a top of a hamburger bun. Flat on the bottom, showing it's too deep and then the arch at the top. We're gonna have to add shim to the pinion support so we can go less deep, a little more shallow. Here we have our pattern, too shallow. Here's our heel, our toe. We're way at the heel. We look at the bottom of your hamburger bun, flat at the top, too shallow. So right now the pinion is barely touching the ring gear on the drive side. I've seen people do this, 
shear off all these teeth under acceleration and wonder why a gear doesn't last. As you can hear, the pattern being not deep enough, the gears are slapping each other, both drive and coast side. That right there is where your noise comes from. When you get a noisy rear end, that's what's happening. Paint the same teeth. Let's see what changed. Make sure we're smooth. Take a look at this pattern now. A little bit more round shape, not so close to the toe, not so close to the heel. Looks like a football, and that's a good pattern right there. Now we're gonna set up the carrier preload. With the backlash correct, we tap the adjusters both for additional preload and also to line up the retainer clips. You always wanna tighten it, you never wanna loosen it. Until it perfectly lines up, it will not hurt the carrier and or carrier bearings. So I do one side at a time. That retainer clip back in. Make sure it's flush. Even though we're close, never back it out. We're going to take this one and line it up. Just like so. Now we're gonna torque our main cap bolts. They're half inch bolts with an Allen head. It's 100 foot pounds of torque. a bit more nuance to the assembly, but this will get you started on your own build. If this helped you or you learned something new, tap that like button. And don't forget, we want to hear from you. What steps do you want to see broken down in detail? Which steps are difficult to replicate with your setup? And make sure you're subscribed to stay notified about the next fun project in the Rear Wheel Performance Garage.